It's time now for a look latest in local news. In the news, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce held its post-legislative luncheon this week at Coastal Pines Technical College. Our local state delegation on hand recapping the session. WIFO FM on hand had a chance to talk with our state leaders. Today we'll hear from State Representative Stephen Meeks, who had these thoughts on what took place at the state capitol. Representative Stephen Meeks, uh, post-legislative session. Uh, you mentioned the health care. You thought that was a big part of what took place up in Atlanta. Yes, absolutely. We uh, were able to pass a mental health bill, House Bill 1013. Uh, it, was, it was the result of a two-year study committee uh, and headed up by leadership and the professionals that are familiar with mental health and uh, really uh, making mental health uh, uh, covered by uh, insurance companies just as other illnesses are, uh, are covered under insurance. So it's, uh, it's an issue that we have been, uh, been very We've kicked the can down the road for too long, and it was time to get something done. So this is a great start. And the study committee that produced the bill will continue for uh, another, uh, I think 2025 is when it actually is set, uh, is set to sunset at this point. So we will continue to uh, look at that bill and see what needs to be done moving forward. Agriculture always a big part of Wayne County. You knew that better than anybody. There was a bill passed to protect farmers from people suing them. Explain that. The, uh, yes, the, uh, they refer to it as the uh, Freedom to Farm Bill. It's a piece of legislation that really gets into the weeds and the nuances of what is a nuisance. Uh, really uh, more concerned in the areas and where folks are leaving uh, big cities and moving out to some of the rural areas. What it does is that it, it allows uh, landowners or uh, neighbors uh, of farmers, if you have a, a, a the farmers being a nuisance, you have a time frame. We moved it, the current law is one year, we moved that to two years uh, to allow action to be taken or to be settled with, uh, with a neighboring grower. Um, a lot of it was centered around confined animal feeding operations. There was some uh, sense in the uh, messages that were being sent out in opposition to the bill that we were trying to attract large animal feeding operations, particularly hog farms. Uh, that was not the case. It was not the intent of the bill, but really being able to provide some protections on both sides. Uh, you know, as, as a farmer myself, we know it's important that we be neighborly and good neighbors. Uh, as I've said many times over to my colleagues in Atlanta, the folks that have been, uh, you know, in their home and uh, maybe not a farm around them, those those individuals need deserve protection too. So I think we reached a good compromise on the bill and uh, and look forward to it being implemented moving forward. The governor signed that bill uh, last uh, this, this past week, I do believe. Now the session's over, you're in campaign mode. You're out there running, you got a Republican opponent that nobody's heard of, but uh, how's the campaign going for you? Campaign's getting geared up. Uh, looking forward to getting out and seeing folks and shaking hands and uh, letting folks know what we've been able to do and what we hope to continue to do in the, that in the future. We've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, we've talked a lot about broadband. It's one of the issues that I ran on the first time I ran uh, that economic development. We've had good success with economic development, but we can't stop here. Uh, broadband is uh, is progressing. Uh, the EMCs now have the ability to offer uh, uh, internet service through their fiber system. Uh, more than 20 EMCs are now participating with uh, an estimated more than uh, 280,000 uh, homes to be served. Uh, those uh, f the first. Uh, Agree the first customers of those agreements and that effort uh, came on in, online in March. Uh, Satilla EMC uh, here locally is doing a great job of, of getting uh, some of those uh, services out to people. So it's it's moving along. It's great. And I just appreciate the opportunity to serve. It's it's about the people of the state and the people of the 178th that I, that I, the reason I want to do it and being their voice in Atlanta. I certainly appreciate that opportunity. I'm humbled by the support and just looking forward to getting out and asking folks for their vote. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, sir. And again, those comments of Stephen Meeks again seeking re-election. He has opposition in the Republican primary as Case and Carbaugh from Blackshear. As under the race is on the Republican ballot in May. Carbaugh operates a coffee company in Blackshear, Georgia, a 2018 graduate of Pierce County High School. Once again, the primary is set for May 24th with early voting beginning on May 2nd. Tomorrow we'll close out our comments from the post legislative luncheon. We'll hear from Bill Warkheiser. Once again, he will be in his last year of representing Wayne County. And again, he'll be on We'll have his comments tomorrow from the post-legislative luncheon. Once again, if you're not a registered voter, you have up until this Monday, April 25th, to become registered. Again, that's the deadline, Monday, April 25th. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, the Commercial Messages, so please stay tuned.
It is election year 2022. We continue to bring you comments from those that are seeking political office here locally and statewide. Tomorrow on the Butch and Bob Show, we'll have in studio school board member Bruce Harris. He's seeking re-election in District 2. His opponent is Kelvin Mock, and we'll have him in studio this coming Tuesday. Other contested school board races in District 5 between incumbent Nick Ellis and opponent Tina Mosley. We've had both of them on the Butch and Bob Show. District 1 and District 4 school board members Joe McPipkin and Sharon Daniel running unopposed in the District 3 incumbent Ray Davidson not seeking re-election. Only candidate on the school board ballot in District 3 is Todd Wise. On the county council, we have several of those candidates in studio. Still have a few more to go. District 1 has three candidates, Mike Gordon, Brian Griffiths, and Stephen Jones. District 2 incumbent Kevin McCreary running unopposed. District 3 has four candidates, Larry Brantley, Morris Melvin, Tim Hopkins, and Corbett Nichols. District 4 has James Thomas on the Democratic ballot and Fred Anderson on the Republican ballot. This race will be decided in November. In District 5 incumbent Kathy Keith, running against Jamie Hickox in District 5, both on a Republican ballot. That race will be decided in the May 24th primary. Again, that's the date of the primary, May 24th. Once again, the deadline to register to vote in this election is Monday, April 25th. If you've changed your name or your address since you last voted, please update your file by coming into the registrar's office and filling out a change of address form. Redistricting changes have only changed the voting districts. Your county precinct and polling place have not changed. You'll continue to vote at the same polling place on Election Day, May 24th, as you have been voting as in the past. Again, a reminder, advanced voting location for the May 24th general election is the Hall Richardson Recreation Center, located at 644 North 4th Street in Jessup. Early voting begins on Monday, May 2nd, runs through Friday, May 20th, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Advanced voting will also be held on Saturday, May 7th, and Saturday, May 14th, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Hall Richardson Recreation Center. Deadline to request an absentee ballot by mail is May 13th. First day an absentee by mail ballot can be mailed is April 25th. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes in the news. Beginning May 2nd and for a period of 90 days, Dixie Road over Boggy Creek will be closed and there will be a detour right at that location. Southeastern Site Development doing work in the area and they want to let residents know that once again, Dixie Road over Boggy Creek Road will be closed for approximately 90 days beginning on May 2nd. Sensing date of August 1st has been set by U.S. District Judge Lisa Godby Wood for Travis and Gregory McMichael and William Roddy Bryan for the hate crime convictions and the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. Three men were convicted back in February of the hate crimes as a jury determined that they, were, that they targeted Arbery because of his race, among other charges. Three men had already been convicted of murder in the state court last fall and sentenced to life in prison. Only Bryan was given the possibility of parole. Once again, the sensing date set for August 1st at the Glen County Courthouse. Odom Homecoming presenting Spring Outdoor Movie Night, Friday, April 29th, 8 p.m. at the Odom Train Depot. The movie is Hop. They ask you bring your own chair, blanket, and golf cart. It's free to the public. The movie will start at dark that night, Friday, April 29th. Concessions will be available for sale at the townhouse. Again, that's Odom Homecoming presenting Spring Outdoor Movie Night, Friday, April 29th. And the Wayne County Fair coming back to Jessup on April 26th to the 30th. Tuesday through Thursday, it'll be 6 to 10. Friday and Saturday, 6 to 11. Admission, $10 per person. Rides included in the price in the Wayne County Fair. Set for the dates of April 26th through the 30th at the J.C. Fairgrounds. That's going to do it for latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan's have a great day.